G'day, I'm the Asian Dad and we're going to look to this Dell Position 7560. It's a 15 inch mobile workstation from Dell and it is designed for the professionals who are after performance. I have created a review video of its bigger brother which is the Dell Position 7760 which is the 17 inch model of that. Now if you haven't checked that video out I'll put a link in the description below and you'll see a little tag here which you can follow have a look at after. Now I will be referring to that video quite a bit because the Dell Position 7560 and the 7760 share very similar in qualities and features. Now, I will be also creating a separate video regarding the performance difference between the i7 and the i9 and which one to choose for. I'll also be creating another separate video regarding about choosing between the Dell Precision 7000 series versus the Dell Precision 5000 series. Now I'll be having a look at the temperatures and fan noise of this computer as well as the speakers and I'll, of course as always I will be putting timestamps along this video just so you can skip to different sections that you may be interested to save you time. Now with the configuration wise I'm going to tell you just to refer back to the Dell Precision 7760. Now I'll just tell you what the difference between the 70 560 and the 7760. So with the 15 inch, it now only has, for the processor wise, it is still the same 11th gen Intel Core, same with the RAM, same configurations, but what I have found with the RAM wise, it doesn't, may not have XMP support for the RAM. So that's just boosting up so you can actually get better performance. Now I may be wrong with that, and now if you do know that it does support or found that it does support please put in the comment below so the other viewers can actually get to it but for my testing when I actually went to the BIOS I could not find the XMP boost for overclocking so I suggest that this probably won't have XMP support just like the Dell Position 7760. Now as for the Storage wise, it only has three slots of M.2 rather than the four slots of M.2. So if you need more storage, then go with the Dell Precision 7760. The, else, the other thing that is different with the Precision 7560 is its display option. With the 4K option, it doesn't do the 120 hertz refresh rate. It only does 60 hertz refresh rate. But else, that is the only difference in configuration wise. So if you're after more speed for the RAM, then go to 7760, or if you need more storage, go to 7760, or if you're after that 120 hertz 4K display, then go with the 7760. Else, I think 15 inch model is just a nice compact version of the 17 inch version. The Precision 7560 still houses the 720p webcam located above the display. Now, I like to see Dell give us an option for a 1080p webcam. I'm starting to see that introduced into the new latitude range this year but it'd be nice to see it filtered to the precision range as they are more of a high-end laptop it'd be nice to actually get an option for 1080p webcam we are doing more video conferencing and we're also doing more content creation which is what this laptop is designed for so please they'll give us a 1080p webcam for the precision range now that it does house our privacy shutter which is just a nice little flick of a switch there and you'll see a physical shutter that goes over the lens and you also see it indicate go red just to tell you that there is a physical covering over the lens so even if it accidentally turned on you've got something blocking it which is fantastic this is a recording from the 720p webcam from the precision 7560 this is the video in audio unedited so you can hear and see what the quality of the webcam is like now i've got two types of lights currently turned on as always I've got my one studio lights turned on and also I've got the down lights in this room turned on as well for ambience so I'm gonna turn off my one studio light off and you'll hopefully see this adjust now I've got two down lights in front of me and two down lights behind me now the two down lights in front of me is quite far away so there's not much light hitting on my face so I'll consider this a dark environment now if you are in an office environment you should actually get better light so I'm going to turn my one studio light back on and hopefully that just there and of course with better quality of light it should give you better quality picture now i definitely love to hear what your thoughts are of this 720p webcam so put a comment below let's have a look at the ports starting on the left hand side of the mobile workstation we've got two thunderbolt 4 ports which is usb type c looking at the rear of the workstation mini display port which is version 1.4 
full size HDMI port, which is version 2.1. Now, this is able to support extremely high resolutions like 4Ks and 8Ks. Ethernet port, AC power port. And on the right side of the workstation, we've got the security lock slot, two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, which is USB Type A ports, and the one on the right supports power sharing, headphone jack, and an SD card reader. There are two speakers located above the keyboard. Now when I test out the maximum volume of the speakers, it managed to measure in at a peak of 84.5 decibels. So that's pretty decently loud. So it's about the similar volume loudness as an iPad Pro, just to give you a little bit of reference. So you won't be struggling when you're out doing a presentation in a cafe or outdoors. Now, as for the sound quality of the speakers, these are really decent speakers. They have great clarity between the high, mids, and lows. It's got quite a amount of decent amount of bass, and also find the acoustics quite nice as well. And they're actually quite balanced for the high, mids, and lows. So overall, the speakers I can be very happy with. Audio quality of the 7560. The weight of the Dell Precision 7560 is 2.75 kilos, add in the 180 watt power adapter becomes a total combined weight of 3.39 kilos that you might be carrying around with you. There are two options for the battery. You can get a 68 watt hour battery or a 95 watt hour battery. Both are six cells and both support express charge, which means you can charge the battery from zero to 80% in one hour's time. Now, I did perform my battery life test on this particular unit. This one's configured with an i9 and I tested in my five different modes as usual. So in best performance, it managed to get an hour. And in better performance, it managed to get an hour and 10 minutes. In better battery life mode, it managed to get two hours and 10 minutes. And in battery saving mode, it managed to get two hours and 45 minutes. And in my media mode, it managed to get seven hours and 40 minutes. So the battery life on this is not great, but that's kind of what I was expecting for this mobile workstation. They are more closer to a desktop replacement, so you're really going from one site to another and hooking it, connecting it to mains power. But at least you can still take it out to a cafe and do a quick presentation, and that's pretty much about all, and then you quickly scramble to try and find power for this, which is kind of not unsurprising because this is more a performance computer. Now, as a disclaimer, I do put a consistent workload across all the system resources when I perform the battery life test, and most of the times with applications, they do only really hit the processor and system resources in burst speed. So you should actually get better battery life than what I am giving you. I'm just giving you the worst case scenario. As for the temperatures and fan noise of the Precision 7560, when I put this computer on load, I found most of the heat was concentrated near the center right of the keyboard, specifically around about where the P key is. And that's kind of where the processor and the discrete graphics lives underneath. Now, when I took my measurements, my ambient temperatures was 23 degrees Celsius, and my ambient room noise was 37 decibels. Now, before I start off with the measurements, I want to actually just give you a bit of reference point, is your average hand is anywhere between 32 to about 35 degrees Celsius. So just take that in mind as I read out the temperatures for noise so you can know how hot things are. So I took my base measurement when the computer was on idle and the hottest area of the keyboard measured in at 38.5 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, it was still at 37 decibels, which is practically quiet. Now the actual core temperature went all the way up to around about 62 degrees Celsius. After that, I put the computer on 20% loads. So that's average use, tasks like office productivity work, streaming videos, surfing the web, and the hottest area of the keyboard measured in at 39 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, went all the way up to 39 decibels. So spun up the fan a little bit 
And as for the internal core temperature, it was still at 62 degrees Celsius. Then I put the computer on 50% load and the hottest error on the keyboard measured in at 40 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, it was still at 39 decibels. And as for the core temperatures, it was 69 degrees Celsius. Then I put the computer on 100% load and the hottest area on the keyboard measured in at 44.5 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, hit a maximum of 53 decibels. And as for the core temperatures, it went up to about 72 degrees Celsius. I also measure the bottom back cover of the computer and the hottest area measured in at 54 degrees Celsius. And of course the fan noise stayed at 50 three decibels. When the actual fan noise ramps up to its maximum speed, it's not a very annoying fan. It's actually quite quiet, I find, and it's a very low hum rather than anything else than a high pitch whine. So even when this computer is running 100%, you shouldn't get be too annoyed by the fan noise. Normally I create a section demonstrating the processor stability performance as well as single core stability performance, but I actually did that in my first impression and unboxing of this Dell Precision 7560. And unfortunately, after even off the few testers and updating the BIOS and drives of this computer, it hasn't changed since that video. It's actually very similar. So I'll get you to refer back to that video. If you haven't checked that video out, I'll put a link in the description below. You'll see this come up here. So I definitely, was a bit sad that I could not get better performance and this is the i9 version. So I'm still waiting for word from Dell about the stability performance of this i9. So if I do get more word from it, I'll put it in the comment below. So do check that out. As for the keyboard, trackpad, display and build construction, it's pretty much like its bigger brother, the Dell Precision 7760. So I'll get you to refer back to that video just to save you a bit of time. So having a look at the benchmarks of this Dell Precision 7560. Now this particular unit is configured with an i9 11950H processor with 32 gigs of RAM and 512 gig SSD. And also the discrete graphics is the NVIDIA RTX A3000. So I'll put up the scores for Passmark, CDBench R23, PC Mark, 3D Mark, Geekbench 5, Crystal Disk Mark, Blender, Pugin, Premiere Pro, Pugin After Effects, Pugin Photoshop, Pugin DaVinci Resolve, Luxmark Octane Bench, MATLAB 2020B, Eugene Engine, Assassin Creed Valhalla, Far Cry New Dawn, and Immortal Phoenix Rising, and Spec View Pref. Let's have a look at the internals of the Precision 7560. First, you just gotta unscrew the eight Phillips head screws of the back and just pry it open. Now, it's easy to start from the SD card and then just move your way across from the side. It's pretty easy to undo. And I'll just put just across on the side. Now, we've got the 95 watt hour battery, six cell battery, and it is held by three screws. And you can pretty much disconnect the battery from this lever here, just pull that up. And I've just undone the screws for those who are interested to see what's underneath the battery. There's not really much to see underneath the battery, you can see. And I'll just pop this onto the back down here. Now, on the above here is the primary SSD M.2 and we've got the other two more slots so that's three in total so that's another two now to take note of is they've got thermal pads on each of these and that will then actually touch the copper on the back end of this back plate to actually use the whole entire back cover to help with the thermals which is actually great to see for the hard drives and then we've got above here is the WAN module. I don't have that configured in this particular unit. And then we've got the SIM card and then we've got the Wi-Fi Bluetooth module right here. And then we see the two sold dim slots for the RAM. Now there is four in total. The other two on the other side of this board and Dell will initially use those two first when you have this configured and then leave these two free for your upgradeability. And then we've got the processor underneath this one and the DGPU underneath this one here. And you can see the two massive heat pipes and we've got a twin fan system here. Now how the airflow works is it sucks air in from this from this direction and then pushes back out to the rear. 
Overall, the Dell Precision 7560 is a very decent mobile workstation. It's got good build constructions, has decent speakers, and has quite a lot of configurations for the storage and the memory. Now, I do wish they actually had a 1080p webcam option. I'm hoping that will come next year. And also, the performance of this computer is pretty decent. Now, I am a little worried about the i9 performance of this configuration, so I do probably at the moment would recommend looking at the i7 or the Xeon version of the Dell Precision 7560. Now we also continue waiting for Dell's reply about the i9 performance, so if I get a reply I'll put it as a pinned comment below. And also the feel of this computer is so premium, it is really nice. Now I hope you find this video informative or enjoyed it, if you did, and even to support my channel, smack that like button for me, it does help me out. And if you had done already, subscribe to my channel by hitting the subscribe button on the bottom right of the screen. I do try to upload a new video every week, and of course, just remember, imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting. And I'll see you next video.